Hello everyone, this is Mr. Collier, and I'm here today to give you some notes on Newton's second law of motion. So let's go ahead and start, and let's write that up at the top. This is a very fun one, and it, has to, it coincides very nicely with the Newton car lab that we just finished today. Newton's second law of motion. And for my little picture, I haven't put a picture up in the corner for a while. I'm going to draw a wagon. I like wagons. Some wheels on the wagon. And a little pole. And in this wagon, there's going to be some serious mass. And this is all about trying to pull or move mass. And there's Newton with his little top hat. I don't know if he really wore a top hat, but I always like to imagine that he did. All right, here we go. Let's take some notes. There's the red line on the left so we can get oriented. Uh, it's not a very long set of notes. And actually, before I talk about Newton's second law, I just want to take a second to talk about someone who came just a little bit before Newton, someone you may have heard of, and this guy's name is Galileo. Galileo. And... Um, we, not, we need to talk about Galileo because it's important for us to understand that Newton, although he was a genius, his ideas didn't just come out of the air or out of vacuum. There were people before Newton who had some pretty close ideas to what Newton said, and one of these is Galileo. And one of Galileo's ideas is that once an object is in motion, No force is needed to keep it moving. Now, this is an amazing thing because it sounds an awful lot like Newton's law of inertia and Newton's first law. And so it's just clear that you know, there was already people kind of, you know, talking around Newton's first law, and Newton came along and just said it a little differently and gets the credit for it. So this idea paved the way, this idea of Galileo's, paved the way for Newton's three laws of motion. And th this particular part of the notes has more to do with sort of the history of science and the way that it works. And I always want you to remember that almost always when someone comes up with a just amazing breakthrough in science, they just didn't do it kind of in their own little lab all by themselves. They were usually working on ideas that other people, you know, sort of came up with. And those people came, got their ideas from other people. And it's kind of this, you know, evolutionary process that goes on. So let's talk about Newton's second law now, that we have a little bit out about Galileo. So here we go, Newton's second law of motion. And we're going to write that down. Newton's second law of motion. And this one, this one is a little bit hard sometimes for students to you know, get their head around, but we'll talk a lot about this. And Newton's second law says, acceleration depends on an object's mass, which we know to mean how much stuff or how much matter is in the object, and on the force acting on the object. Now, my favorite example of this is maybe a trip to the grocery store or a trip to Costco where you have to really load up the cart. And when you first get to Costco or Sam's Club or the grocery store and your cart is empty, it's really easy to get it from stop to get going down the aisle or to make turns. 
But as you shop and you put more and more stuff into that cart, it gets harder and harder. So if you want to accelerate it from a stop to moving down the aisle of the grocery store with all that stuff in it, the more stuff you put in it, the, the more you have to push. You like to really push it when it's really full. And so the, the more mass it, an object has, the more force you have to apply to get the same acceleration. And so if you think about it, the, like a lot of the speedy Reno you know, sports cars are built to be really light so they can get more acceleration with the same engine. So let's write down uh, the, the very famous formula that is associated with Newton's second law. And that is that force, and we'll sort of underline the F because we're using that in the formula, equals mass times acceleration. And oftentimes we say F equals M times A. F equals MA. So let's just write that down. F equals mass times acceleration. F equals MA. This will be something you're going to talk about in high school and in college. And so uh, you're doing yourself a big favor if you just get that down now. Now, earlier we talked about that the units for force are the newton, which were a kilogram times meter per second. And this is where we can kind of see that. So if we say force is equal to, and what's a unit for mass? Well, a very common one and kind of a standard one is kilogram. And we know that acceleration is often written as uh, meters per second squared. So if we just add units in here into this formula without the numbers, we can see that where we got the kilogram meters per second squared is just from this very famous formula. Now, we'll, I will ask you next week um, to use this in uh, several different ways in some calculations. And one of these is mass equals force divided by acceleration. So I just rearranged this formula, formula algebraically to get this so we can calculate the mass of an object if we know the force applied and the acceleration that was achieved. That's an A right there. Likewise, we can calculate acceleration if we know the force that was applied and the mass of the object. Now, you're saying, but Mr. Collier, we know how to calculate acceleration, and that is speed final minus speed initial divided by time, and it absolutely is, and I'll ask you to calculate that both ways, and you'll know which formula to use based on what information I give you. If I give you some speeds, and some time, then you know to do it the original way. And if I give you force and mass, then you'll know to do it this way. And it's pretty simple. We're almost done with these. Just two more pieces of information. And this is just a little hint to help you get uh, remember. And this one says, for a given force, and there's the abbreviation, that F, for a given force, as mass goes up, acceleration goes down. As a golf, as your grocery cart gets full and full and full, full, and you can only push with the same amount of force, you're going to move that thing slower. All right. And conversely, or sort of the opposite of that, for a given force. As the mass goes down, acceleration goes up. And I think you saw that when you did the Newton car experiment. Uh, if you have any questions, please see me and we'll have a nice discussion.